All right, y'all, Naglan is released and new weapons are up, AKA the forgeable weapons. And the best part about that is that three weapons will be available for free in the mail alongside some goodies. And I am very, very happy that we were able to accomplish three million cheers to get those weapons. And we did it in two days. Two days! Y'all are crazy. So for Natlan's forgeable weapons, we're going to be analyzing them today. And we're also going to find out who are the characters that benefit most from these four-star forgeable weapons. So we will be focusing on the free weapons given first and then the weapons that weren't available for free. Starting with the polearm weapon. So the polearm weapon is called the Footprint of the Rainbow. It's a defense stat polearm weapon. And its effect is using an elemental skill increases defense by 16% for 15 seconds. And the R5 doubles 16 to 32%. This weapon's really, really good and specifically meant for two characters, and it's going to be Yunjin and Kachina. Yunjin and Kachina work great for this weapon. Yunjin's probably the character that you already have, and Yunjin, especially C6 Yunjin, works best with this one. However, Kachina is a new free four star character that you are going to have, and her kit is amazing with this weapon. Okay, we are talking about an off field Geo DPS with defense scaling damage for both her skill and her ultimate and it's really really good and honestly this weapon is literally meant for kachina and can be r5'd you get her for free you get this weapon for free all you got to do is just build it next one is going to be the catalyst weapon aka ring of yaksha i hope i pronounced that right oh my gosh so it's going to be a health based weapon so it's an hp stat and it has a pretty interesting passive right here Using an elemental skill grants the Jade Forged Crown effect. Every 1000 max HP will increase the normal attack damage dealt by the equipping character by 0.6% for 10 seconds. Normal attack damage can be increased this way by a maximum of 16%. Then when you R5 it, instead of 0.6%, it's going to be 1%. And instead of 16%, you double it and it's 32%. This weapon is insane specifically for Molani. The new 5-star character Molani is going to be really, 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 really good with this weapon. I remember Gacha Gamer making a Molani guide. There's going to be a link in the description below to his video regarding Molani and the Ring of Yaksha, especially if it's Molani in Natlan, because the thing about Molani in Natlan is that she has a built-in enhanced basic attack and she does nuclear damage with that attack and she scales off of her damage with hp and it's gonna be crazy because she can do that while also maintaining consistency high damage and this one is given away for free so if you're gonna get Mulani, ring of yakcha is a really really good option if you're not going to get her signature although i recommend that you get her signature her signature is freaking cracked now what about nuvelet well nuvelet does scale his damage with his hp However, this weapon buffs normal attack damage, not charge attack. So Nuvelet is not really going to benefit from this weapon because it's a normal attack damage weapon, whilst Nuvelet is a charge attack character, so it's not really going to work for him. Unless you build Nuvelet as a normal attack character, in which case you're, you're, you're weird. But there is one niche character build that I am very sure that a lot of people did not see coming that would make this weapon absolutely absurd for this character, Tank Fei. If you have a Tank Fei, you can use this weapon on her and it will turn her into a freaking bruiser. For those who don't know, Tank Fei is a niche playstyle for Yan Fei and it prioritizes Yan Fei, a typical DPS character, into a support character providing a shield. Now the thing about that is you need a C4 Yanfei in order for this to work. So a C4 Yanfei is usually paired up with Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer so that she can be a proper support. But if you're going to go for Ring of Yakche right here, it also helps out with health and normal attack damage input. So it helps out with her health stat and normal attack damage buffs. It is absolutely insane if you are going to build Tank Fei with the Ring of Yakche because the Ring of Yakche aids both Yanfei in terms of her offense and her sustainability because her using the health stat will benefit the shield and the health stat also benefits her damage and the best part about this is that if you're going to look right here on the passive it says
says here that the normal attack damage dealt by the equipping character by 10 seconds. And the thing about Yanfei is that her skill has a cooldown of 9 seconds. 9 seconds. Which means she has 100% uptime with this freaking weapon. It's gonna be a bit funny, but hey, I, I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting and a pretty entertaining build if you're gonna give Ring of Yakcha to your tank fey. Next one is the last free weapon to have, and it's the Claymore weapon, Earth Shaker. Now, Earth Shaker is an attack stat weapon which gives the effect after a party member triggers a pyro-related reaction, the equipping character's elemental skill damage is increased by 16% for 8 seconds. This effect can be triggered even when the triggered party member is not on the field. And then if you're going to go for R5, that double 16 to 32. That is really, really good. Now, I have to clarify this. This is not just for pyro characters, but for teams that focus on pyro-based reactions. So anything regarding burning, overload, or melt, or vaporize, those kinds of reactions will be really, really good. And the character that equips Earthshaker doesn't necessarily need to be the cause for these reactions. It can just be something like you have Shengling and Fischl both doing their off-field DPS shenanigans, and then you see them do Overloaded. That still counts as a pyro-related reaction, and you can use characters like Navia and just do increased elemental skill damage, which is insane. Now, speaking of Navia, Navia will probably be the best character to use in this kind of situation, but it is kind of a niche playstyle in my personal opinion because her elemental skill is really, really good and you can use it twice. But the problem with that is you're not really going to focus on her geo-infused attack, you're not really going to use her ultimate, and Navia has way better options in my personal opinion, especially with the cardboard sword as her best free weapon as long as you completed her roses and muskets. So if you're gonna use Navia, Navia is gonna be pretty good if you're going to be focusing on her elemental skill damage. Now, another character that would benefit this would be Diluc, because Diluc is really, really good with his elemental skill with the combo, and that's only if you're not gonna use Diluc in a plunging DPS kind of situation, because elemental skill damage is different from plunging attack damage. They're completely different. So if you're gonna use this weapon on Diluc, Diluc has to be an elemental skill damage guy, and can benefit with a uh, melt, with vaporize teams especially, and potentially overload teams if you want to go Diluc and overload. Now, a character that I kind of did not see coming with this one would be Fremine. Now, I think Fremine with this set would work because his elemental skill is his kit. He can do elemental skill over and over again. I believe his alt turns his elemental skill into an even more enhanced version of itself. So if you have something like Melt, it would work great for Fremine, and I think Fremine can work with this weapon very, very much. Now, another character that would make this work is Kinich, but the thing about Kinich is that, first of all, he's not released just yet, we're still in the first phase, but there's also the fact that Kinich can be featured here in a very niche burning team. Now, you can put Kinich with Shengling, Bennett, and Emily in the same team, and Kinich would benefit a lot with the pyro-related reactions with burning, and then Emily just doing so much damage with burning, and then Kinich doing a lot of damage with his elemental skill, which based on the leaks, he is going to be basing a lot of damage on both his skill and his ultimate. The, however, the thing about Navia is that it's going to be niche. For Diluc, it's going to be niche. For Fremine, it might work for him the best, potentially, but it's not really physical based because Fremine is a physical DPS, not a cryo DPS, apparently. And then Kinich can work, but it's still very, very niche. And then we go into the weapons that are not available for free, and the sword weapon is the Flute of its Spitzel. Now, the Fruit of its Spitzel is literally the same exact effect as the polearm weapon. Using an elemental skill increases defense by 16% for 15 seconds, then 32 if you're gonna R5 it. This weapon is definitely just meant for two characters, aka Albedo and Chiori. For me, personally, don't give this to Chiori because Chiori has way better options, but if you don't have any other option or you want this weapon as an R5 to be her option, go ahead. But in my personal opinion, don't give this to Chiori. However, you can definitely give this to Albedo because Albedo doesn't have that many weapons that would benefit him other than Cinnabar Spindle, and Cinnabar Spindle is an event exclusive weapon. So if you have Albedo, the Flute of its Spitzel is his best in slot right now, especially with the 
capabilities of increasing his defense stat and his defense stat is literally his kit and you can use the elevator situation as a capable off-field DPS kind of thing. For Albedo, especially if you're gonna go for a mono Geo team, Albedo can potentially come back for this, but considering that Shiori also benefits from this, maybe not. However, take a look on Albedo. I'm going to be very sure that Albedo will be available in the standard banner very, very soon. I have a very, very good feeling that he will be there in next year, let's say. Now, the final one is the bow weapon. Chainbreaker. Now, Chainbreaker is an attack stat weapon and it has a pretty interesting effect. Now, for every party member from Natlan or who has a different elemental type from the equipping character, the equipping character gains 4.8% increased attack. When there are no less than three of the aforementioned characters, the equipping character gains 24 elemental mastery. And then for R5, instead of 4.8, it's 9.6%, and then instead of 24, it's 48. So basically, they just double the stats. Now, the characters that I think would work best for this weapon would be Venti and Fischl. Now, the thing about Venti is that Venti is the only Animo bow character that I would see benefiting this the most, because for Faruzan, Faruzan needs another Animo character, and it doesn't really work with the second passive with the increased elemental mastery. And for Venti, he works really, really well because Venti can legitimately be that Kazuha kind of role, being the sole Animo character in the squad, and can benefit a lot with that additional elemental mastery and increased attack. So it's going to be very, very good for Venti. And for Fischl, this will work for Fischl if it's specifically for Dendro teams. So if you're going to use Fischl as an off-field DPS for Dendro, it's going to work because Dendro units or Dendro-related teams work very well with increased elemental mastery. And Fischl, especially with C6 Fischl, it would work amazingly well for Dendro lineups. Now, what is the weapon that I recommend you to build first? Well, in my personal opinion, the weapon that you have to build first has to be the polearm weapon. And this is the reason why. Kachina is given to you for free and her entire kit centers around defense. And the polearm weapon centers around on defense as well. And the passive works great with Kachina. So if you're going to use Kachina and the polearm weapon, both of them are available for free, go for it. Kachina and the polearm weapon will work together seamlessly. Thank you guys for watching and please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on so that you can win your 50-50s. Comment down below on who is your favorite Natlan character as of right now. Personally, it's Molani. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'm Hermit Grab, and I'll see you soon.